Welcome back. Today we are doing something a little bit different. This is, I guess, kind of a making, it's like a making a thing to make video, um, but we're gonna unbox this Bamboo Lab A1 Mini that I got. I've got some fun projects in mind and we're gonna see what's in this box. I got it on uh, sale for Black Friday. So we researched and this is supposed to be one of the easiest kind of plug and play beginner 3D printers to use. So uh, today we're gonna open the box. I'm gonna show you what's inside Inside the box. Hopefully we can do a test print and uh, I guess you'll see if it really is idiot proof. Before we dig through this, I'm gonna show you guys what else came, not in this box, but separately as part of like the Black Friday deal they had. So obviously Black Friday is passed, so you're not still gonna get the same deal, but if you already had these things in mind you wanted to order or if they run another special, then you'll kind of, um, know what you're getting into. We ended up getting some filament. We ended up getting green, cause why not? So I'll put all the info for what we got down in the description below, but this is the filament. We also ended up, now this we paid for, this this and the filament wasn't, that was a, a not part of the free gift, but this one is a different nozzle. This is the hot end with stainless steel nozzle. It's a 0.2 millimeter. Um, I have some finer, printable things I want to do. So I figured maybe a smaller nozzle might be the way to go. So I have no idea what I'm talking about. So let's see if this was even worth buying. <laughs> but um, so this we did pay for. So this was the free gifts. So the free gifts, we got the LED flame tea light candle set, warm white. So that is one of the things we got. We also got the remote controlled 16 color puck lights. And then we also got the card shuffler. So these were the three free gifts that we got when we ordered the printer for Black Friday. All right, let's get in the box. I always wanna check these. I always feel like they hide sometimes stuff in these packages, so I always have to double check. Wow, this does look partially put together. Oh, it looks like it came with a, a little bit of PLA. Huh, wireless mouse components kit. This looks like it might hold some sort of spool. Looks like instructions. You know, those things we usually toss to the side. I think we might actually have to read them this time. A thing, I have no idea what it is. We're gonna find out shortly what this is. There was a little warning on here. Do not grab or press on the X axis. Okay, we will keep that in mind. This is what it's looking like. We just pulled everything out of the box. Oh, got a little foam in here. It looks like we're gonna have to cut that and pull the foam out, but this is what it is looking like fresh out of the box. We have not assembled it yet. That is next. Just wanna give you guys an idea of what it's gonna look like when you open your box. All right, I came back with scissors and coffee. I'm gonna wake my other brain cell up and uh, get these instructions read. Inside the little instruction pouch that I just opened, Right here, they sent us some stickers, kind of Apple-like. Well, I don't think Apple puts the stickers in their stuff anymore. Huh? Let's see, there's QR code, little advertisement in here, warranty leaflet, disclaimer and safety guide, and a couple of warnings for me there. And uh, let's get into these instructions. First thing we're gonna do, remove the four screws to unlock the Z-axis limiter. Cut the zip tie wrapped around the tool head. That was this guy, this foam there. And remove the foam padding. So let's do that. It looks like these are in the back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this around and uh, we're gonna take those four screws out. One, two, and three, four. That's what we're taking out. And you get two Allen keys. We're gonna be using the bigger of the Allen key to undo those screws. So next, tighten the three screws circled in green to lock the heat bed. 
Okay, looks like I'm using the big guy again. All right, next, slide in the purge wiper unit into the slot at the end of the x-axis. Next, we're gonna install one of the M3-12 screw for purge wiper from the accessory box. This is everything that was in the accessory box, and I see some screws down here. Ah, there we go. That's pretty good. That is clearly labeled. Looks like uh, there's cords and a switch in the picture, so it looks like I need to rotate this again. And it looks like uh, installing the spool holder is gonna be next. I don't know, let's turn around and find that piece. Side note, I love that everything is clearly labeled. That is incredibly helpful, so big thumbs up. We're actually installing the base plate and then that spool holder is gonna slide down over this. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. That way you can kind of watch it. And I know sometimes I wanna see how something's put together to see if it's something I even wanna bother with. Okay, and then if you can see, there's a little slot right here. It looks like this. Here we go. Working good. It's time to get the power set up. And then I wanna make sure that we have, it looks like the appropriate amount of space in the front and the back. Uh, and then after we do that, it looks like we're gonna go ahead once this is on and get the Wi-Fi set up. All right, so I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna make sure not to, uh, in the beginning, it told us not to grab it by that. So I'll make sure I don't do that. But the power button is right back here. So let's get this plugged in. We hit the switch and let's get a little closer. I'll bring you guys in so you can see it. Oh, that was joyful. All right, let's see, I'm gonna move this again so you guys can see a little bit better. So let's hit start. I'm in North America. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get it set up on Wi-Fi and uh, then I'll bring you guys back for the rest of the setup. So we went ahead and got the Wi-Fi entered and now it's prompting me to log into the uh, Bamboo Handy app. So I'm gonna go ahead and download it on my phone. I'll show you guys what that looks like and uh, then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so now that our printer is bound to our account, it's giving me this option to do the calibration. Five, seven, 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and hit start. So it says connect the tool head filament inlet, either one of the four. I, I honestly will probably do it to this front one, uh, this one right here. You notice I turned the machine sideways because um, I needed to make sure that I had enough room in the front and the back. Later, I'm probably gonna move this to a different table. Comment down below if you know. Um, I don't know anything about 3D printers. If I move this to a different surface, do I need to recalibrate or not? Nah? So please let me know down below. I would appreciate the help. It's funny, this is like, this filament feels like it's like almost the same size as the machine. So it looks like in the diagram, it looks like this little ninja star is what we're gonna pull out here. And it looks like that's what kind of clips them together at the top. 
They left an in for a friend. All right, actually, let me swap this. In the picture, it's coming under and up, so I'm gonna have it going this way. Now I'm gonna feed the filament into the tube. Ah, <laughs> I scared myself. Okay, let's make sure this is neatly back where it goes. Here's the end of the filament. This is where I stuck, you can see where I stuck that tube. And now I'm just sticking it in the bottom hole here. And if the camera zooms out, do you see how I'm feeding the filament through the tube? There we go. All right, well, I'm meeting resistance, so I think that means it's gone where it needs to go. So it looks like, based on this, maybe we can try doing a test print. It's giving me the thumbs up. You're all set. It's time to lubricate Y-axis guide rails and the lubricating oil is included in the accessory box. Okay, so it's telling me to lubricate this and in the video they had, it had me moving the plate around, but um, it is not in the same position. Mine is still kind of stuck in where like it was in calibration mode. So I'm just going to, I can reach like 99% of this. Um, and then I, but I want to do this before the test print because it did prompt me to do that. So let's go ahead. This is the uh, lubricant that came with it. And it's going to tell me, it, it just said to go ahead and put the oil along the side. And then in the back in the, of the video, they kind of smeared it down. I guess to get it down here. And then they wiped off any excess on the top with, it said a non-woven cloth, uh, which would be, you know, like a paper towel or something like that. So I'll just put a tiny bit here. All right, so it's a little bit runnier than we thought it would be. No problem. All right, so we did it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit done. And um, it's looking like there's that little boat that I always see everybody print, the, the benchy. I'm curious, I'm gonna hit filament load. Filament type is unknown, but it's required to perform this action. Do you wanna edit the filament's information? Yes, I do actually. Just curious what our options are. And it's PLA basic is what we have. Oops, that's not right at all. Let's pick the right one. PLA Basic is right there. Okay. Oh, you can even, you got the bright green. You can even put that in. Um, I don't want to touch pressure control. Um, I don't think the box tells me anything about that. So if I don't know what it is, I'm going to leave it alone. Let's hit OK. Little checklist of the steps it's going to go through. Right now it's heating the nozzle. I don't know if you guys can see this. So it came with a nozzle. We bought an extra smaller one, but the uh, 0.4 is what's in there right now. So it's heating that up. Okay, so now it's on purge O filament, old filament. Observe the nozzle. If the filament has been extruded, tap done. So we don't have any old filament in here because we've never had filament in here, but I think that's where it will come out. Um, so I'm just going to hit done because there would be no filament. Looking good. It actually smells a little bit like warm plastic. It's not a bad smell. It doesn't smell like, you know, people burning trash in the country or anything like that. But um, you can smell it. It's not super strong. Okay, so we've got some filament in there. So let's just hit print files. As it says turn on bed leveling is recommended. Turn on time lapse for time lapse video recording, which is pretty neat. I'm not doing that today because I'm already hunched over this thing with my phone. So I don't think I need to do that. I think we're just going to hit print and see what happens. It says it's going to take about 20 minutes to print. So I stopped the printing because this looks like a fail. This doesn't look like a uh, tiny plastic tugboat. I think that when I pushed the filament down, I didn't push it down all the way and maybe it didn't get hot enough when it's supposed to 
um, it's supposed to be heating the filament, like kind of preheating it and getting it ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, try to reprint this because this isn't what we were trying to get. <laughs> Here's our little, our little buddy right here. So it says printing completed. We're just gonna joyfully hit okay. Okay, it's a little stuck on there. The plate is a little warm. Okay, well, that lives there now. It took a little bit harder of a tug <laughs> to get that off, but um, this is really cute. You can see on the bottom Oh my gosh, look in there, there's a little steering wheel or hull. Is that what that's called, the hull? I don't know. Everything I know about boats I learned from below deck. Really cute. And it, it did take about 20 minutes, not too bad. I would say this is a successful, we'll call this the first print. We'll keep that first one a secret. You can see there's a little little bit of cobweb, I guess a little bit from the filament. Really nothing that a good cleanup can't help. And I think that the sides look pretty smooth to me. Now I was wondering about how smooth this would come out because I primarily was interested in using this to print to do lost wax casting. And I think I could probably, um, and we'll see, I'll do some other test prints in vi future videos. I could probably sand this down to get it smooth before I cast it. That's a different video, but I think this came out pretty good. Quick note, after printing our little benchy, I decided to move this onto a sturdier table. It was on top of like an Ikea table before, and this is like a solid wood table. I think this will be a little less jumpy when it's printing. So I think any kind of bouncing it did, I feel like, was kind of more my fault than the actual machine's fault. I'll probably do another test again later on just to see if it comes out a little bit smoother. I think this will work out just a little bit better and it has a little more space on this table too. So this is what should have happened when I was printing Benchy. I should have seen what everyone seems to be calling poop come out of the nozzle before it started to print. So lesson learned there, I guess. If you've made it this far in the video, thanks. I have a few other quick observations before I leave you guys. I do feel like the prints that I did later came out a bit smoother. I don't know if it's because they were longer print jobs and seemed to print a tad bit slower, but I do think putting it on a more solid table really helped. At the very least, it bounced a lot less. I tried a few other things like the tea light holder because I wanted to see if I could make something smoother. I pretty much went on a printing spree. <laughs> I did an air tag holder. I knew I'd have to flex it to get the air tag inside. So I was curious about how brittle it would be. I did a ring with a lot of detail just to see how fine I could get with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Ah, perfect. Huh, ironically that came off pretty easy. Thought I was gonna need a scraper for my scraper. I did a scraper that I found just in the menu of the machine itself. Another note, I had some trouble accessing the camera a few times, but that could be something in my settings I'll need to figure out, but it did eventually work for me. All in all, I'm really happy with this little 3D printer. Maybe in the future I'll upgrade to a bigger one, but I like how easy this was to use. I saw quite a few of the ones on Amazon, for example, that seemed like they came in a million pieces and I felt like I need an engineering degree to put it together. I think if you've been wanting to get started 3D printing and you've been scared off by it looking really complicated, or you just wanna get printing quickly, this is an excellent choice. I have some fun projects in mind, so hopefully you'll tune back in to see. That's all for me today, folks. I will see you in the next one. Go forth, be kind, be creative.